Hallelujah. Amen. Your word, your word, your word. Your word, your word, your word. Your word, your word, your word. Your word is what we need. Your word, your word, your word. Your word, your word, your word. Your word, your word, your word. Your word is what we need. Your word, your word, your word. Your word, your word, your word. Your word. Breathe life, oh God, oh God. Breathe life in all the 
to these dry bones. We wait, we wait, we wait, we wait. Breathe, Lord, to these dry bones. We
one that I love. You're the source of my joy. You're the keeper of love. Where can I hide from you? Every inside. Yes, I love you.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you very much. God is wonderful. Can we shout for him? Can we shout for the glory of our Father? Can we shout from above? Let's make a joyful noise. Let's make a joyful noise. If you are a spirit man, you'll understand why this song came before now. And you will rejoice why this song came before now. God loves you. All I can say, God loves you. He loves you deep. Those who are watching all over the world, this song says it's a wonder, it's a miracle to know how God loves you this way. Many people look at each other and never have this thought of how God loves the person you're looking at. But you can see the heart of God concerning such a person. If you can see the heart of God concerning such a person, you'll know and understand the mystery of God concerning man. This is also Psalms chapter 8. What was man that you are mindful of him? And the son of earth born, who has made the little lower than angels. Yet you gave him power and authority over the works of your hands. Meaning God had man in mind. What was man that you are mindful of? So if you can know how God loves you. This is also John 3, 16. For so God loved the world that he gave his only son. If you can know how God loves you, there are many things that you can stop. If you can study the love of God upon your life, you will stop everything that is not in the will of God. If you know how God loves you, 
meaning you'll stop wasting his love. You'll stop wasting his love because doing what is not in the will, it's a waste. God loves you. He is wonderful. Kimo solo, solo. Hakiratwa, yeah. Kaliratwa, yeah. Kaliratwa, leli, is great he remains wonderful god is with you sons and daughters welcome again on a beautiful day that the lord has made for us together and i believe we have an appointment with god where no one will be disappointed but to be brought to the next level the level that you never experienced before come out of your comfort zone god takes you to a level that you never expected the level that is uncommon the level that you have to only look at him and no one else. God loves you. Welcome you all, sons and daughters. I welcome you all. May the good Lord love you. I welcome you all all over the world. May he love you deep in order for you to realize how great are his blessings in your life. He loves you deep. God loves you. And I thank you so much all over the world. Those who are in Europe, welcome. Africa, welcome. America, South America, Northern America, Australia, Eastern world, Russia, everywhere, India, God loves you. All sub and the sub-Saharan countries, we love you. May the good Lord bless you. All the islands, may the Lord bless you. All over the world, I believe tonight, get ready for another level. A level where you get to know more from above. A level that you cannot interpret, yet only God can interpret it to you. And when it's interpreted by God unto your life, it's an anointing unto your life. For words spoken to you are spirit and life. Thank you all. I greet you all, sons and daughters. Mwah. Love you all. Love you. Love you all. Bless you guys. I love you. I believe God still keeps you during this hard and trying time. God remains with you. God never left anybody. God still remains with you. I love you all. Can we clap and shout for Jesus? Can we clap, clap, clap and shout for our master? Can we clap, clap, clap and shout for our master? Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Can we shout, make a joyful noise unto him? I can't hear that noise. Can you make that joyful noise? That joyful noise unto the Father. Can you make that joyful, joyful, joyful noise? Ah, I can't hear you. You're not doing it better. Do it the way I know you. <laughs> Good luck, you guys. Wonderful. Wonderful. I believe God has given the message tonight. And um, he does not give the message when you do not deserve it. You deserve life, therefore he gives you life. You deserve that anointing, therefore he gives you the spirit. He remains with you. Remain blessed. And I believe you're all ready for this message. May you be prepared for it. Because it takes you further. When God gives something fresh, His love has become so deep for you. To give you what you don't know, it must be a gift. When a gift comes, it comes wrapped. You don't know what is inside. Your life will change after the gift has been unwrapped. He loves you deeply. I want you to understand when God permits hard times, it's still the love of God. When God permits challenge, it's still the love of God. When God permits you to be thrown into a pit, it's still the love of God. And when you come out, you are still sold as a slave. It's still the love of God. And while you are still a slave, realize one thing. Realize one, while you are still a slave, your masters cannot afford you because you keep on prospering above your masters. So without choice, they have to sell you to a better master. And when you arrive at the top, you become like your master. Hence it says in Matthew 10, a student is not better than his teacher, but it is enough for a student to be like the teacher. Let us all come to the enough part and get to understand where God is leading us. Focus. Never change your mind and never change your thoughts. Because the moment you change your mind, you'll sin greatly because you'll say the Holy Spirit says when it's not the Holy Spirit. As we have started yesterday, I believe many heard the message yesterday. God leads us into his greatness. Symbols of things to come. A spirit man becomes that sign. A guy too eight. It is God. Who wants his glory to remain in his church in order for you to experience peace and prosperity? I'd like you to understand, all of you, you are leading ministries. Get this part even when I went on yesterday. No one owns a ministry. No one. The moment you say your ministry belongs to you, there won't be peace and prosperity. God says silver and gold are mine. 
silver and gold are mine. The moment you say it is yours, God said it belongs to him. Acts 3 from verse 6, Peter says, I don't have silver and gold. He understand Haggai chapter 2, verse 8. Silver and gold are mine, says the Lord. So Peter begins to minister legally so in the presence of God, knowing that this ministry is not mine, it belongs to God. But such as I have, I give unto you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I can go, oh, I, listen, I can only give it to you, I can only give this to you through the use of the name of Jesus Christ. Meaning I cannot. It's not mine. Listen, whatever you can control or use it in the wrong way, it's only your gift. But not the anointing, not the presence of God. If it's in the wrong manner, the presence goes. The presence leaves the temple. But people will still see healing. People will still see deliverances. And you may as well be deceived by the very gift you carry. I want us to understand this. God loves you. It will still operate. When Acts chapter 16 happened, Paul wanted to go to Asia together with his crew. But God came in a vision. A man appeared in a vision and said, Paul, come and help us in Macedonia. Come and help us in Macedonia. When he came out, he said, the Holy Spirit says we must go to Macedonia. No more Asia. But if they could have gone to Asia, people would still be healed. Deliverances will still be there without the presence of God. Because the presence of God directed them to Macedonia. There's no gift of opening prison doors. There's no gift of shaking the foundation of prison. There's no such gift. It can only be the presence of God with you. For you've gone where God wanted you to go. You've done what God wanted you to do. A gift of healing cannot shake prison foundations. A gift of deliverance cannot open doors of, doors of prison. It can only heal, but iron bars cannot be broken. I want us to get this. The Holy Spirit saying, come and help us. In so be led by the Spirit. So in other words, when that vision came, Acts chapter 16, the Apostle Paul was able to interpret the verses that came about by the Holy Spirit when a man appeared in a vision, come and help us. Come and help us. He understood the text of that message. He understood the text. He understood the context of that message. When that context came, he says, let's go to Macedonia. I want us to understand that part. I want us to get this. You are not the flesh. You will not do it according to the flesh. The moment you do it according to the flesh, even the people you teach, there's no revival. Don't call it revival. A spirit man can only be the one who can bring a revival. But without being the spirit man, being the flesh, it's not the revival. You'll sin. Anointing fall on me. You'll sing, they will sing it together with you, but no anointing, no revival. Because there's no interpretation of that text. I want you to understand who you are as a daughter, as a son. So, when that vision comes, the Apostle Paul is able to interpret it to his crew, to the people he's with. If there's no understanding, there's no revival. 
Meaning, in other words, where there's a spiritual man, there's a spiritual revival. I want you to get this. Where there's a spirit man, there's a spiritual revival. So a spirit man interprets all things. First two Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 15. That's a spirit man. He calculates all things. He understands the message of God in order for him to interpret it to people. Meaning to bring understanding to people. If people don't get understanding, there's no spiritual revival. There's no spiritual revival. I want us to get this. People love revivals. Everybody comes. I'm leading a ministry. I want a revival. Now, you lead a ministry which is your own and not of God. If it belongs to God, then glory will remain in the temple. Then there will always be peace and prosperity. Where you lead a ministry and there's no peace and prosperity, you are owning the ministry. It's yours. No one can instruct you. No one can come with the message at you. God says, no one, because it is your ministry. It is your church. And never forget, if it's your church, it's your body. You will never know how to wash it. You will never know how to keep it pure, because it's yours. I want us to get this. Okay, let's go to the same book of again. Chapter 2. You can read it for us then. Haggai chapter 2, we can start from verse 6. Haggai chapter 2, start from verse 6. I want us to get this message, sons and daughters, God speaks. I want you to understand what we talk about when we talk about spiritual revival. You are a spirit man. Where there's a spirit man, there's spiritual revival. You can, under, you can write it down. Where there's a spiritual man, there's also a spiritual revival. A spiritual revival does not come without understanding of the message. Demons can roll. Healings can happen. Not being a revival. And you'll see anointing fall on me. Well, it's not a spiritual revival. A spiritual revival, it's unstoppable because it's led by a spiritual man. A spiritual revival becomes unstoppable. So when a ministry belongs to you, we're going to see lots of abortions happening. Spirit gives birth to spirit. And flesh gives birth to flesh. Where there's no correct pregnancy, there's abortion. Where there's no correct pregnancy, there's miscarriage. You remain a woman. A womb man without properly producing what God has planned for you. I want us to get this. And I believe tonight God is taking us even further. Can you read there from verse 6? For that says the Lord of hosts, yet once more, in a little while, I will. I will shake and make tremble the starry heavens. Yet once more, I will shake. Once more, meaning again. Once more, again. I, sh I shook, but I will also shake again. I will also shake the starry heavens. Once more, again. When it shakes, who will be shaken together? with those who are shaken. 
That's why Hebrews chapter 12 says, you have received a kingdom that can never be shaken. Let's go. I will shake and make tremble the starry heavens, the earth, the sea, and the dry land. The earth, the sea, and the dry land, I will shake them and make tremble, not just shaking, and make tremble. Uh huh. And I will shake all nations and the desire and the precious things of all nations shall come in. I will shake all nations and the desire, the preciousness of all nations shall come in. Who will come in? Where is he coming? Into his temple. Malachi chapter 3, from verse 1, you'll read it on your own. The desire, when I send my messenger to prepare the way, the desire, everyone who have been desiring or looking for or seeking him, that desire will come into his temple. When it comes into his temple, there must be peace, there must be prosperity. Listen, you have a ministry. We, the whole world is experiencing this. When this shaking comes, if you are not still at peace, you will not understand the message. And the people you are teaching, it will be difficult for them to understand. You don't understand why I'm saying this. It will be difficult for them to understand the message. Hence, abortion starts. Some may think I'm busy with church and that you're busy with abortion. That process has already started. Because not being able to understand what God is saying. Let's go. You understand. Let's go. I will I mean, this, is, this is the one you are seeking. This is the one you are desiring. Your desire is Christ Jesus. But someone's desire, listen, someone's desire can be silver and gold. Belonging to him. Someone's desire can be a ministry belonging to him. That's why when it suffers, you suffer. Leave it for God. Leave it for God. Let's go. I will fill this house with splendor. Yes. I will Say fill this house. You see, he will come. And when he comes, he feels, I want you to understand. He will come to his temple. The desire will come. That's Malachi chapter 3 from verse 1. You That desire, the one whom you were seeking will come, will suddenly come to his temple. And what will happen? Repeat that part. I will fill this house with splendor. Repeat. I will fill this house with splendor. Repeat. I will fill this house with splendor. I will fill this house with splendor. I want you to understand, if he fills the house with splendor, the splendor that he fills the house with cannot be disappointed by any challenge that comes. When we, we do say, when God opens up the door, no man can close. No situation can close. Nothing can close. Because you've been hearing more about prosperity, but I want you to hear it. You've been hearing more about prosperity. You've been digging and digging about prosperity. You've been searching for prosperity. And I believe you were following the right way. If you followed the right way, that prosperity you were looking for before challenge must not be shaken right now. If he's the one who came and filled the temple with his splendor. If God filled this temple with splendor, there will still be challenges that come. But will the splendor of God be disturbed by any challenge? Understand the book we're reading right now. Understand. You understand your position as a son, as a man of God, as a daughter. You understand your position, who you ought to be. What you Remember, don't forget at 16, the apostle Paul was able to interpret the vision that came. And after that, he tells the people he's with. The Holy Spirit says Macedonia. When they go to Macedonia, there's no gift that can open 
prison doors. There's no gift that can shake the foundation of prison. There's no gift that can do that. And the splendor of God lives in you. When the splendor of God lives in you, wherever you go, wherever you go, God has already gone ahead of you. God has already gone ahead of you. Let's go. I will fill this house with splendor. I will fill the house with splendor? Says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine and the gold is mine. You get that part? Silver is mine, gold is mine. Now, let's get it. Most of you, you are only money. It's yours. Most of you, the ministry is not, it's not God's, it's yours. It's your ministry. You have control over it. And I want you to divorce that part. Give it to God. Give money to God. Give everything to God. Because why is he talking about filling the church with splendor, your desire, Christ, the Messiah will suddenly come and you fill his house with splendor? Why is he going straight to gold, silver and gold? This is where spiritual revival has to happen. So it has to be him. Let's go. The latter glory of this house. The latter glory. This is our times now. The latter glory of this house. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. With its successor. With its successor. With its successor. Who is the successor? Uh -huh. To which Jesus came. To which Jesus came. Came. That's why I'm saying many will fast for him to come. Many will pray for him. Well, others don't even pray for him to come. He just comes. Well, others don't even fast. Because the splendor remains in the church, you are with him all the time. You will look for him as if you have never eaten the very bread. You will look for him as if you have never drank the same blood. You will fast for the glory. Why do you fast for what has already come? Why do you, now, now it says he has come, but now the problem is now silver and gold are mine. And now, when you go to Acts 3 from verse 6, what is he saying? Peter says, I don't have silver and gold, and he's about to go into the temple where everybody went in carrying their own silver and gold, giving to the man who was not, they could not interpret the purpose of that man for being before the gate of the church. Not even the priest of the church could interpret why that man was there. Be able to interpret why there are sick people coming to you. Be able to interpret why there are people looking for deliverance. That can be done through deliverance by this higher level than the gift that you have. You may be giving them what you own. So the church gate beautiful, it's just gate beautiful without the splendor of God in the church. Because everybody could not interpret when they went in. So silver and gold, I don't have, I don't own. On your own, you read 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 14 to 16. What we give, we give what is from his hand. We give what is from the hand of the Lord, because silver and gold are mine. We're really, we give what is from the hand of the Lord. There's no way where you have to find yourself saying you own a ministry. You're in trouble. That's why you find yourself stressed, depressed. Emergency opening for money. Because you want money. You, the problem is, you used to have money. It belonged to you. Now, because it's from your hand, it left you. Because it's from not from the hand of the, it left you. Where's the splendor of the Lord from his temple? Where did the splendor go? I'm teaching you as a father tonight. You need to understand. Misinterpretation of what God gives will lead you to Stress will lead you to depression. 
Where is that splendor? Because you used to have money because it was yours. Listen, your father never had money. Your father never had silver and gold. Because I didn't have it and I don't want to have it. I don't want because it's in the arm of the Lord. Silver and gold are the Lord's. So I'm only interested in seeing his splendor in his temple. I'm happy that this trial is for everyone. This trial, this Satan are for everyone. Let's see the splendor. The splendor does not change. The glory of God remains the same. He says, silver and gold are mine. So why do you find yourself in the street marching for it? You march for what is in your father's hand? Why do you find yourself crying for it? Can you cry for what is in your father's hand? Where's the splendor of the Lord? Where did the glory go? So if it's in your hands, it's your glory. And the glory of man is like the flower of the field. When the sun heats, it withers. When the wind blows, it blows. Because now, you are owning it. I want to teach you all sons and daughters. Listen, I want to help you with the spiritual revival. I want you to remain and be recorded amongst those who were able to stand. And God can use you to teach generations to come. Listen to this. Go on. Go on there. The latter glory of this house with its successor yes. to which Jesus came. With its successor to which Jesus came. What, what did you, is it, when the splendor of the Lord comes, Jesus comes to your church. And when he has come, can you go? If the splendor stays forever there, why do you have to fast for him to come? Every time in that very church you pray, come Lord, come Lord, come Lord. No. The moment you recognize that it's not mine, it's yours. I don't have it, it's yours. Jesus stays there. Ephesians chapter 3 says he makes this permanent dwelling in our hearts. So the splendor of God must remain in you. John chapter 14, you, your lives are hidden with Christ in God. So why do you have to call him when your lives are hidden with him in God? Who has the splendor? First thing to call him when he lives in you. If he lives in you, you interpret the message. And the people you are with gets the right message. And nobody will say, but he says Asia, we were going to Asia, now he says Macedonia. Now, nobody will say, because you, they, 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 it's a spiritual revival. There's understanding, you can align it. There's understanding, you can underline that there's understanding. There's understanding. Spiritual revival does not happen where there's no understanding. But where there's understanding, there's corporate anointing, there's anointing, there's spiritual revival happening, and nothing can stop that revival. Let's go. The latter glory of this house with its successor yes. to which Jesus came. To which Jesus came, yes. Shall be greater than the former. Shall be greater than the former. Why is it like many have carried the former? Why is it like your church is the former? Why is it like the way you operate, it's like the former? So the latter glory of this house shall be greater than the former because the splendor is there and 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 why is it greater silver and gold belongs to god it does not belong to anyone so many you are in ministry you own a ministry now you are, a, you are the owner of the ministry you used to have money because it belongs to you where is it today because it was in your hands now you look for it to come back in your hands but if it belongs to the lord there's a spiritual revival that's going to happen now Read, read, read there, read there. Let's hear the revival. In this place will I give peace and prosperity. L listen, listen to this. It's a spirit. In this place, in this place, shall I give peace 
and prosperity. Because it's in his hand. It's not yours. It belongs to him. So in this place shall I give peace and prosperity. He didn't say, I will take it. So now you want to say, who took it? The devil. So the devil entered your church and took it. So no evil can go to the arm of God and take silver and gold. Nothing can go and take it from there. So silver and gold, I have none. Such as I have, I give you in the name of. So everybody looking at you shall see spiritual revival. These people are unschooled. These people just came yesterday. But you can see that they have been with Jesus Christ. Why? You can see that they've been. he has come to them. He resides in them. The splendor of God has come to their lives. Understand her guy. Understand her guy. Understand what God is saying there. I don't want to own silver and gold. I want God to dress me because it's from his hand. Because if you have you are going to dress yourself. Be a spirit man. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3. Though you live in the flesh, don't do it like you live, like, like the, the flesh, or as the flesh will do. Don't wage war like the flesh, or as the flesh would do, would wage war. You are a spirit man. Interpret spiritual truths. And give people spiritual truth. Let's go to Macedonia. And there we're going to see a spiritual revival. Unstoppable. Overthrowing kingdoms ruling with justice. Overthrowing kingdoms. I mean, it, justice was there, but iron bars, jail was opened. Where was the law there? Where was justice? Where was justice? So it means he overthrew. Kingdom ruling with justice. I declare the law will not prosper over you. But only that which is from above shall cover and keep you in oil for you to go through. I want us to get this. Re re repeat that part. Repeat that part. The latter glory of this house uh -huh. with its successor yes. to which Jesus came yes. shall be greater than the former. Shall be greater than the former, yes. In this place uh -huh. will I give peace and prosperity. In this place will I give peace and prosperity. So in this place I will give peace. I will give prosperity here. Can you imagine, you, you started the ministry that way. It's not your ministry, it belongs to God. So God stepping in, the glory coming in. In this place, I give peace. And, and it will be like that forever. It will be like that. Decades and decades, winds coming, sicknesses coming, floods coming, whatever coming. But it will be, because God said, in this place shall I give peace and prosperity. This is a spirit man. I want us to understand. Remember, okay, remember Ezekiel 24, when God caused Ezekiel's wife to die. I want you to understand spiritually. There must be understanding of what is happening. You read it on your own. You, there must be. When Ezekiel's wife dies, God says to him, do not mourn. Do not take off your sandals. Do not shave your head. Don't follow what the traditions is doing. What I'm doing right now, it's not you. It's them. That's a spiritual event. Now, everybody, when they leave Jerusalem, when they leave, when they've been captured, they should not cry. They should not mourn. They should rejoice because they will be able to interpret. It. Can you imagine what will people say? Because it's traditional. You must mourn. You must shave your head. You must. People will mock at you because you are doing something different. 
a spirit man does not do the same as others. Whatever situation happens, you, whatever situation happening, you need to interpret, you need to have knowledge concerning such. You mourn when you're, supposed, you're not supposed to mourn. The apostle Paul comes and interprets it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, he said, let those who mourn live as if they do not mourn. Those who buy something as if it's not theirs to keep. Silver and gold belongs to God, not to you. You buy something, it, now it's yours. Now you own it. You own a ministry, you own the church, you own everything. Now I want us to get this. The main issue is interpretation of God's message. When he says, silver and gold are mine, interpret. It's not yours. Then he says, the one whom you desired, Christ, Jesus, the glory, shall fill the temple. The splendor of God shall be in the temple. Jesus will come. And he says, in this place, there will be peace and prosperity. Repeat that last part. Peace and prosperity. Repeat that. In this place. Will I give peace and prosperity? So in this place, will I give peace and prosperity? In this place, will I give peace and prosperity? So we are all leading the church. We are not leading ministries. But we need to understand where there's the biggest mistake. You are a spirit man. Don't do it according to the flesh. For though we live in the flesh, we do not wage war according to the flesh. Hunger is felt in the flesh. But when a spirit man is hungry, it's 2 Corinthians chapter 11, from verse 27. Experiencing cold weather, going through hunger, sleepless night, going through fasting, Lack of clothing. You are a spirit man. You need. That's why the apostle Paul says, "I went through that." That's being hard pressed on every side and never crushed. Every side, lack of clothing. So if it's fasting, lack of clothing. Every side. If it's lack of clothing, sleepless night. If it's sleepless night, cold weather. Every side. God interpreting everything as your fasting. I want us to get this. Manual for leadership, the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah comes there as the governor. And Ezra is the high priest. And there are sons and daughters, the Levites. Levites understood their positions. They understood their position, meaning knowing how to interpret the message from Ezra. Ezra understood the governor, Nehemiah. I want you to understand, all of you as leaders. This is a manual for leadership, the book of Nehemiah. I want us to get this part. That's where we begin to see a spiritual revival there, which comes through understanding. Where there's no understanding, you see many fail to give the congregants understanding. Therefore, it's an abortion. Revival does not happen when there's no understanding. I want us to understand. You need to understand that protocol. It's a spiritual problem. You are a spirit. I want us to get there. Okay, let's go to the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8. We can see. 